look because I posted comments on a lot of people's, plus I made some general comments. You and look at the specific comments. Um, if you did not get full credit, you're welcome to resubmit. Um, and if there's a problem on this one that ripples into the other ones, it probably will just be a matter of copying and pasting a function to resubmit the other ones as well. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Do we have any questions over anything we've gone over so far before we proceed? Yes? OK, good. Good. Uh, a review of array lists. All right. Um, an array list, first of all, what is different between an array list and an array? Yes. Array list is, di is dynamic, all right? Um, are we all clear on what an array is and how array works? You're clear on that, or would some review for an array work? All right. Uh, an array is simply where instead of having a single item, you have a list of items, all right? And so you might have a list of um, so many strings. That's an array. So you might have something like this. up real quick, make sure I get the syntax right. All right, we can declare an array two different ways. One way is to say this, string names equals new string 10, let's say. That will create an array that will have uh, 10 elements in it, and each element has to be a string. All right, I can then refer to individual items in the array by saying the name of the array, so names, followed by a subscript. So names five is the name, is a string that is in the position five of the array. And the array elements start with zero. So the first element in the list is name sub zero, name sub one, name sub two, name sub three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So there's nine elements in the array. Um, I'm sorry, the, the subscript goes from 0 to 9. That means that there's 10 elements in the array. So I can declare the array like this, and that will set the size of the array. And the size of the array can't change. All right? The second way to declare an array would be like this. String names equals... Mike, Bob, and Joe. All right? When I do it that way, that will create an array that has three elements in it. Element zero will be Mike, element one will be Bob, and element two will be Joe. And you can't expand these. They're fixed at that size. All right? And again, if I were to say system dot out dot print ln names sub 2 I would get Joe because name sub 0, name sub 1, name sub 2. If I referred to a number that didn't exist like if I asked for name sub 11 I would get an error because there's not a, a item in, in, in 11, position 11. So arrays, I would think that you would have encountered so far is to say, uh, uh, at some point uh, of your uh, programming um, is simply a, a list of values instead of a single value. Now, where does an array list differ? An array list is a structure that is dynamic, so it can be expandable. All right. 
So an array list, when you declare it, has no items in it. Um, you can then subsequently add items to the list, remove items from the list, and the size of the array list will change to reflect that. All right? So there's a handful of functions that we can use with an array list. And let's look at some of the common ones. First of all, to create a new array list, we have to import the package that the array list is in. So at the top of our class, we have to say import Java util array list. We create our array list like this. We say array list. And I'll use strings. One difference between an array and array and an array list is that an array list can only store object references. An array, you can create an array of object references or primitives. Now, getting back to this, remember string is actually, are actually objects in Java. And you can kind of tell that, even if you didn't know that for sure, by virtue of the fact that strings is with a capital S. The capital letter designates that that's a class name, not a primitive name. But I could also create a, there should be brackets here. I could also create an integer of ints. Whereas with an array list, it has to be an object. Now, there's a couple ways that you can create an array list. If I don't put anything after it, it's an array list that can hold any object, any object that we throw at it. Those are going to be kind of rare. Usually, we're talking about a list of something specific. So if we wanted a list of names and we wanted to do it in an array list, we would say array list, array list string equals new, and I'll put this down on the line below, new array list string parenthesis. What that does is that creates an array list. I forgot to give it a name. Equals new array list string. So I'm calling a constructor on array list. And I'm saying it's an array list, but I'm saying it's a special kind of array list. It's a, an array list that only takes strings. So I'm going to use this to form a list of, of name, a list of names, let's say, a list of strings. All right. Now, if you look at our order example, you have an array list for on the order that contains pizzas, right? Because that's all that you can put on an order is pizzas. If we didn't designate that kind of object here, we could put any object we wanted to in there. And that really wouldn't work, right? They could only order pizzas, so we put pizzas. We only want there to be strings in this array list names, so therefore we declare it as being an array list of strings. Now, when you do this, how big is the array list? Zero. It's empty. All right? So there's nothing in the array list at first when you declare an array list. There are no positions in the array list. All right? When I declare an array, immediately I know the size of the array. And that's how big the array is always going to be. So if I ask for the size of the array, it's going to tell me the array is 10, even if some of those entries are null. It's going to tell me that there's 10 slots in that array, or three slots in that array, or whatever. With an array list, initially it's going to be empty. How do you add to an array list? By saying names dot add, and then you can put a string in it. 
or in this case string s equals charlie and I could say names dot add s and so on. Yeah, in fact, in our pizza example, we have exactly that. We have an array, an array list that contains pizzas. Tell you what, rather than writing it out, I already have the code. I'll, I'll just bring the code up on the screen. In the order, we have an array list that contains pizzas. So we can only put pizzas in this array list. The name of the array list is pizzas. It's a new array list that's going to contain pizzas. So I have an array list out there, but right now there's nothing in it. How do you add? Well, I created a function called add pizza. And what does that function do? It takes the pizza that is passed to it and adds it to the array list. So if we look at our test code, we create our new pizza objects up here. Down here we go and we add to the order that pizza. That will take that pizza object that we created and put it in the array list for the order. Notice how this is, this is just this is a small point, so you can listen to it, and if it doesn't mean anything to you, just forget I ever said it. All right. This is an example of what is called data hiding. All right. I have a function that says add pizza to the order. I don't know how, that, how the pizzas are stored in the order. They might be stored in an array list. They might be stored in an array. They might be stored using some other mechanism. Maybe there's only three slots for pizzas. I have hard-coded that you can only order three pizzas, whatever. The function, though, doesn't let on how pizzas are stored. The function just takes care of it itself. So if you want to add an order, a pizza to an order, you just say order.addPizza and give it the pizza. The order object itself, then, is responsible for storing that pizza where it's supposed to. But we could do this a couple of, you know, many different ways. In our case, it's with an array list. But in other problems, it could be other things. All right. So we add things to the array list. All right. By saying the array list dot add and the name of the object that we want to add to it. Remember, we can't make. Um, we can't add primitives. It has to be an object. All right. Now, when we do this, the size of the array list goes up by one. Because what the add does, if we look in the documentation, The add, according to this, appends a specified element at the end of the list. So it puts it at the bottom of the list. All right? So we start off, our array list is empty. The first name we add goes in position 0. The second name we add goes to position 1. The third name we add goes to position 2, and so on. So we're always adding to the end of the array list. There's another version of the function where we can insert. So I can give an index, and I can put something in. That way I could put something in between two items in the array list if I wanted to. And what it would do then is it would simply bump everything down and insert that item in. So if I had five items in, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I said insert 2, it would put the new item in position 2, and the old things that were in 2 through 4, it would bump down uh, an item. All right, it would bump it down one. So I have all these, I have these functions that I can do. I can actually create 
an array list from an array if I want to, or from a collection. Um, I think there's a way to create an array list from an array or to get an array from an array list if I want, and so on. Question? Oh, OK. What was on? Oh, OK, OK. All right. I always like to know, it's like, did I just say something stupid and I don't, I don't, I don't realize it? All right. So I could add things. I could also remove them. And you can remove them the same way. You can remove based on the index. So I could say remove the thing in position 0. What that will do is then that will bump everything up. So if I remove 0, what used to be 1 will be now 0, and everything will be bumped up. And it will then, again, it's dynamic. So it adjusts the size of it accordingly. I don't have to predefine it. I can use the size to find out the number of elements in that list, which is useful when I write loops, right? Because when I write a loop for a pizza uh, order to calculate the cost of the pizzas, I want to loop through all the pizzas that are on that order. But I don't know how many pizzas are on there, all right? There's not a fixed number of pizzas. There's not always three pizzas to an order or 10 pizzas to an order. I don't even know the maximum number of pizzas in the order because it's an array list. I could keep adding and adding and adding pizzas to the order, all right? So I need to loop through as many times as there are pizzas, all right? One more thing that we can do is we can get. And with get, you give the number of the array element, and it gives you that object, the number in the array list. So if I said get 0, it would give me a pointer to the object that was in position 0. If I said get 5, it would give me a pointer to the object that's in position 5. All right? So let's look at looping through, because that's exactly what we do to calculate the cost. All right? Our array list is called pizzas. It's an array list that's going to contain pizzas. We add pizzas by calling this function, add to the array list this pizza. It will add it in at the bottom of the list. So every time it adds it, it adds it in position. At, you know, it, it creates a new position for it and puts it in there. If it was important, we could insert it at a particular place. But if you think about it, when you order pizzas, it doesn't matter what order the pizza place has them in when they deliver them to you. It's just you got these three pizzas. It doesn't matter if they're listed in the order, uh, whatever order they, they, that they appear in. There is no code to delete a pizza from an order. But we could write code to do that, right? If we had a GUI, for example. Uh, I could order three pizzas and then say, you know what, never mind, I don't, want, I don't need that second pizza. You know, um, make, the, make the third one a large instead. You know, instead of ordering three mediums, you know, maybe make the, second or the third pizza large and get rid of the second pizza. Well, I could have a way to delete that pizza from the order, and I would call the remove function instead of the add function. And I'd have to give the sequence number the, the index that that pizza appeared in, and then I could delete it. Then I could go and call the set function on the third pizza object, which now became the second pizza object, all right, and change the value from uh, medium to large or whatever. So I've added pizzas to this order. To calculate the cost then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through all the pizzas, all right? This tells me how many times I'm going to go through the loop, all right? I have to add up the sum of all the pizzas, not every other pizza, or the first three pizzas, or the first pizza, or the last pizza. I have to add all of them up, all right? So what, what are the indexes of the pizzas in the array list? Remember, each element in the array list has an index. Well, the index starts at 0. 0 is the first pizza we add to, added to it. We then have pizza 1, pizza 2, pizza 3, pizza 4. We have as many pizzas in there as we've added to the order. So if we added four pizzas to the order, we have pizzas 1, I'm sorry, pizza 0 through pizza 3. All right? So pizzas 0 through pizza 3. Because the first one we added got put in position one, 0. The second one gets put in position 1. 
third one in position two, the fourth one in position three. So let's look at our fourth statement. I'm going to start i equal to zero. So the first time through the loop, I'm going to look at the first pizza, right? Because what's the index of the first pizza? It's pizza zero. How long am I going to do this loop? I'm going to do it as long as i is less than the number of pizzas in this. So if, I, if uh, the, the size of the pizza array was four, that means we have four pizzas in there. Pizza zero, one, two, and three. So we're going to loop through as long as i is less than the size of the array, or array list. What's the size of the array list? It's four. So how many times are we going to loop through it? We're going to loop through it with i having a value of zero, one, two, and three. The last time through the loop, i is going to have a value of four, and we're not going to do the loop again, because i is no longer less than the size of the pizza array list. It's equal to the size, so we drop out of the loop. So when this, we only, we're only going to repeat this as long as this condition is true. And each time through the loop, we're going to add one to i. How would this work if there were no pizzas on the order? Well, if there are no pizzas in the order, then i is equal to zero initially. We're going to repeat this as long as i is less than pizza dot size. Well, if there's no pizzas on the order, what's the value of pizza dot size? Zero. So how many times are we going to do this loop? Zero. Because right off the bat, zero is not less than zero. Therefore, we get out of the loop. If we had one pizza on the order, we're going to do it one time. i is going to have a value of zero. Zero is less than one. So we'll do the loop with i having a value of 0. Each time through the loop, we increment i by 1. So the second time through the loop, i is going to have a value of 1. 1 is not less than 1, so we drop out of the loop there. So the array indexes go from 0 to 1 less than the size of the array list. All right. So by doing that less than, we guarantee that we hit every item. So what do we do then? each trip through the loop. Each trip through the loop, we grab a pointer to that pizza in the array list. We say pizzas p get, or we say pizzas dot get i. So whatever value i is, the first time through, i will be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. It's going to grab that object reference from the array list and put it in the variable p. So now p, that variable, points to the pizza that we're looking at this time through the loop. So we can ask what the cost is for that pizza and add it to the order cost. So we're looping through. So as we execute the loop all its iterations, when we're done, we've gone through each pizza and gotten the total uh, of the cost of it. All right. We can do this line, by the way, because we've guaranteed that there's only pizzas in this array list. All right. That's how we can do. That's how we can get away with this line. All right. Because remember, array lists, unless we specify, can hold any object. Well, guess what? We specified the kind of object that it holds, and therefore we can get away with this statement. So the important instructions, important functions for array list, add, that will add to the end of the array list. Size, that will tell you how many elements are in the array list. And finally, get, that will give you a pointer to the particular element that you're interested in. So when you say get, you give it an index, and it will give you that object that's pointed to by that index. Other questions about this? All right. 
very common to loop through an array list, because if it's a list of things, we probably want to look at all of them. So the logic to loop through is something that you'll do a lot of times uh, in this. All right. It's a big day for our pizza place. Ooh. Why is it a big day? It's a big day because we're introducing a new kind of pizza. All right. Ooh. We're, we're, we're introducing a sheet pizza. All right. How is a sheet pizza different than regular pizzas? Well, let me tell you. Sheet pizzas cost different than regular pizzas. All right. Regular pizza. Regular pizza costs costs eight for a ten, eight for a, um, a small, ten for a medium, twelve for a large, and and if there's pepperoni, we add one to it. Sheet pizzas cost 14, 16, and 18 dollars. And if there's pepperoni, it's two extra dollars. All right. There's one more difference about a sheet pizza. That is, with a sheet pizza, we offer an additional option. All right. The additional option is that we can get stuffed crust. All right, we can get it stuffed with cheese. We can only get sheet pizzas for whatever reason. I don't know. I'm not a pizza baker. Just, just work with me on this. All right. Let's say we can only get the stuffed crust pizza for a sheet pizza. And if we get that, it's an extra $2. That's not available for a regular pizza. So, how are we going to implement this? Let me talk about two ways that aren't the best ways to do it. We might be able to get code that works, but remember, your goal is not only to create code that works. Your, co your goal is to create code that is uh, very reusable and uh, less prone to errors and easy to maintain and all those good qualities. One way we could do this, all right, and again, this is the wrong way. No, no, don't do this. One way I could do this is I could go and copy this pizza object or this pizza class and make a stuffed crust pizza, all right? So I could go and simply copy this And I could make this a stuffed crust pizza. Change the constructors to match. And so on. And then I could go and add the attribute. Oh, this is not a stuffed pizza, it's a sheet pizza, my mistake. So I should say sheet pizza. It has a stuffed crust option. So I could go and I could copy this. I could clone this. And I could go and add an attribute to this one that says is stuffed crust. And 
And then I could go and change the calculation to do that correctly. Why is that a, not a good idea, to simply clone the class and add or change the things that I want to change? Yes? Yeah, whenever you duplicate code, you have, you have code in two places. So if something changes and you forget to change it, let's say we get a new oven again and we're able to bake our pizzas faster, all right? I would have to go and change the bake time in two places, all right? I'd have to change it in the sheet pizza and the regular pizza. It's the same bake time for both. They're both pizzas. They both bake the same. The only difference is one of them I can make stuffed crust, and the price of it's a little different because, uh, because they're square instead of round. You get a little more pizza, right? So we charge a little bit more, all right? Um, so, by having all this code then is duplicated, it's in two places, which means that if I wanted to go and change something, I'd have to go and change it in two places. And that's not good, all right? That's not good. So we don't want to duplicate code, all right? Uh, and so making a copy of this and duplicating it wouldn't be a good idea because it would have duplicate code. What's another problem with this? What can I add to an order right now? I can add to an order a pizza, right? Because I declared my array list to contain pizzas. If I created a brand new, unrelated class called sheet pizza, would I be able to add a sheet pizza to this array list? No. All right, why not? Well, because we said the only thing that goes in this array list are pizzas. Therefore, I couldn't, if sheet pizza was a totally unrelated object, I couldn't go and add a sheet pizza to this order. All right, it'd give me an error. It'd say, hey, I'm looking for a pizza. You gave me a sheet pizza. And I could look at the program, I could look at the compiler, and I could scream and say, a sheet pizza is a pizza. A sheet pizza is a pizza. But you know what? The compiler is like, no, it's not. They're unrelated classes. And this says a pizza, has to be a pizza to add it. So this is a wrong option to make a set, uh, to make a, to clone this. To clone this and then just make whatever changes I want to. Wrong answer. A second possibility is I could go in and I could put a property that says what kind of pizza it is, a regular pizza or a sheet pizza. All right? Then I could price it. I could change the way that a pizza is priced. And I could say, well, if it's a regular pizza, do this. If it's a sheet pizza, do that. All right? That could work. That would make the pricing function a little more complicated than it is now because I'd have two big if statements and all there, but nothing impossible. I would have another problem, though, right? There's no such thing as a stuffed crust regular pizza. Stuffed crust is only an option for a sheet pizza. So therefore, if I made it an attribute in the pizza class, then I could set a regular pizza to be stuffed crust. Or I'd have to write some very complicated validation to say, well, you can't make uh, a regular pizza stuffed crust. You can only make a sheet pizza stuffed crust. And that would needlessly complicate it. So I could. This actually is more workable than the first option I talked about. I could simply make changes to the pizza class to allow for a different kind of pizza and to change the related functions uh, to do the calculation right and change, uh, add the property for stuffed crust and make sure I couldn't set a regular pizza to stuffed crust and so on down the line. I could get that to work. There's a better approach though, and that approach is what is called inheritance. All right? Uh, inheritance is sometimes called specialization, all right? Because a, uh, a sheet pizza is simply a specialized version of a regular pizza, right? 
Sheet pizza is still a pizza, right? Remember when I was screaming at, a compi at the compiler? It's a pizza. It's a pizza. So all the things I do to a pizza, I may also want to do to a sheet pizza. That is, I might want to order a sheet pizza and place it on my order. I should be able to do that because a sheet pizza is a pizza. All right? The idea of inheritance is this. I can say one class inherits from another class. The other terminology you hear is that it extends another class. Another way to put it is, is a specialized version of another class. All right? So all those things are different ways of saying inheriting. And what that means is everything that's true for the main class is true for this as well. But there's some extra stuff. And here's the nice thing. We only have to code the extra stuff. All right? We don't have to recode everything. We only code the differences. All right? So in diagrams, usually they represent inheritance like this. Sheet pizza then inherits from pizza. Or it extends pizza. This is a specialized version. And this is often called the subclass. And this is called the superclass. All right? Subclass and superclass. Sometimes also you hear it as a parent and a child, that the parent class is the superclass and the subclass is the child class. How do you know if something inherits from something? You use the is a test. Or you can say, two different ways to say the same thing. This is a that. This is a type of that. So sheet pizza is a pizza, right? That's a true statement. Therefore, the subclass is a example of the superclass. Or sheet pizza is a type of pizza. That's also a true statement. Let's think of some other things, stuff that we haven't written the code for, but we could imagine writing the code for. We had, if, we have, if we have animal and bird, what would be the subclass and what would be the superclass? Bird would be the subclass, animal would be the superclass. Because a bird is an animal. A bird is a kind of animal. So therefore, it passed the is a test. All right, so we could make bird the subclass, animal the superclass. What about transmission and automobile? Ah, does it say part of, though, in the is a test? This is sort of a trick question. For transmission and automobile, there is no inheritance relationship. Neither one of them is a subclass, and neither one of them is a superclass. Because a transmission is not an automobile. A transmission is not a kind of automobile. You're absolutely right. A transmission is part of an automobile. Well, uh, you could do that. A Ford is an automobile. Uh, another example might be a taxi is an automobile. An ambulance is an automobile. A limousine is an automobile. Uh, a four-wheel drive is an automobile. All right. 
or vehicle. A car is a vehicle. All right? A car is a kind of vehicle. A bicycle is a kind of vehicle. A motorcycle is a kind of vehicle. You can have multiple inheritance, right? You could have a vehicle class that's a super class. Underneath that, you could have automobile. Underneath automobile, you could have limousine, taxi, um, ambulance, and so on. But if your answer is that, is a part of, then it's not inheritance, all right? It's what we talked about with pizzas and orders. It's composition. This is a part of that. So for example, what is, there, is there an inheritance relationship between orders and pizza? No. An order is not a pizza, and a pizza is not an order. Orders contain pizzas. Pizzas make up an order, but they're not the same. Therefore, you would use, in this case, composition, because pizzas are a part of an order. Transmission is a part of an automobile, and so on. Um, taken further, uh, uh, another example of a kind of relationship between objects and classes would be like between driver and automobile. A driver isn't an automobile. An automobile isn't a driver. An automobile isn't made up of a driver. All right, it's not part of a driver. A driver isn't part of an automobile. In that case, a driver uses an automobile. So really sort of the three ways that classes can be related is a class can be an example of or a kind of. A class can be a part of or one class can use another class. What about relationship between student and professor? Was that inherited? Is that an inheritance example? A professor is a student? Not really. A student is a professor? No, not really. Now you could say, if you looked at the relationship between professor and class and student and class, Students make up a class, students are part of a class, and the professor is part of a class, so that would be an example of composition. All right? Okay, so how do we do this? I want to actually go and implement this, and we'll continue to talk theory about this um, to, to refine this, but what I want to do is I want to implement that. I want to make sure that I have a sheet pizza all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class. Public. Class. Sheet pizza. I'm going to code the differences, right? Yes. I'm going to code the differences. Sheet pieces have size, crust, and whether they have pepperoni or not, right? So I don't need to put those in there. What is the thing I do need to put in there? What is the attribute I do need to put in here? Whether it's stuffed crust or not. So I'm going to say private. Boolean is stuffed crust. Now, what did I say was different about this? I said there's two things different about the sheet pizza and the regular pizza. I said you price it differently. And I said there is an option for whether it has stuffed crust or not. So, I coded the one difference. I put in a Boolean for whether it's stuffed crust or not. I'm also going to put get and set methods for that, right? Because there is no get and set method for is stuffed crust in the pizza class. I'm going to have to write them.
So this is a difference between this and a regular pizza. A pizza, a regular pizza, doesn't have this property. So of course it's not going to have gets and sets. So that's the difference between a regular pizza and a stuffed crust pizza. Now, that's the one difference. That's finishing up the stuffed crust business. The other difference is the pricing. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to give it the same name. And I'm going to put in the correct rules for this. A medium is 14, or a small is 14. A medium is 16. A large is 18. If it has pepperoni, it's two extra dollars. If it is stuffed crust, it's also two more dollars. And I return that. Now notice that this function has the same name as the other name. We are overriding that function. So when we ask for the price of this pizza, we're not going to get the old calculation. We're going to get the new calculation for just that. All right? Now, I have to do one more thing. I have to tell it that these two are related. Because right now, I just made a stuffed crust class, but I haven't said it's related to the pizza class. I do that by saying, this extends pizza. I'm going to go a little long today maybe two minutes to wrap this up, and then we'll come back on this on uh, Monday of next week. Because I want to test this and make sure it works. All right, let me compile it. Call it Cheap Pizza Java. Let's compile it, make sure it works. Ah, size has private access in pizza. Remember we said these variables had private access, which means that only this class can refer to them. Now another class is trying to refer to them. Uh-oh, do I make them public? No, I make them protected. Protected means only this class and any class it inherits from this class. So I'll make this protected. And that, now, that, now that compiles cleanly. All right, I forgot about that. Now let's test this. All right, let's test this. And I'm going to avoid right now the sticky situation with constructors. So I'm going to go to my unit test, and I'm going to say, Cheat pizza P. We'll get rid of all this stuff. Sheet pizza P equals new sheet pizza. So I didn't create any constructors for this. All right. Therefore, this class will get 
the compiler generated no argument constructor. But I can do the set. So I can set size equal to small. I can say set crust equal to thin. has pepperoni, I can set to true, and I can call p set stuffed crust. to true. All right. So I'm using my set methods because I haven't done anything with constructors yet. So I, since I haven't done anything with constructors, I have to do the set method. Now, how much should this pizza cost? It's small, thin crust, so it should be $14 plus two for the pepperoni plus two for the stuffed crust. It should be $18. We'll see that. Now, a couple of things that I want you to note. First of all, I say p set, set size. There is no set size method in the sheet pizza class. Is that going to be a problem? No, because the set size method is in the pizza class. And this inherits the pizza class. So since I didn't change anything about that, it's not, if I inherited that, you get all this stuff for free. You don't have to go in and define a new set pizza and a new get pizza. You use the set and get pizza from the parent class. Same thing with the other ones. Now here's the interesting thing. I said I'm going to add a pizza. This function is expecting a pizza argument. And I'm giving it a sheet pizza. Is that going to pose a problem? The answer is no. Why not? Well, because a sheet pizza is a pizza. So if I declare a variable, in this case I've declared my array list to hold pizza. It can hold any kind of pizza. It can hold pizzas or it can hold any subclass that extends pizza. All right. It has to extend pizza, so it has to be a subclass of pizza in order to add it to the array list. So pizza and any class that inherits from pizza, we can add to the array list. Because any class that inherits from pizza is a pizza. It's a, it's a special kind of pizza. It's a, it's a pizza with these extra things. So now I should be able to compile this and run it, and it should tell me $18. No, the object's here. Oh, yeah. I, oh, that's okay. I, I still have the order. I, I got rid of some of the pizzas. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. All right. So let's go and compile it. Package Tam. Oh. Yeah, I deleted part of that. Ah, there's a problem. All right, there we go. So it compiles cleanly, and if I run it, bang, it tells us $18. And 
this should have no different of a bake time than a regular pizza, right? Because we didn't define any difference for it, so it should use the regular pizza's function to uh, calculate the bake time. We'll go over this in much more detail. I mean, I hope you followed this well. You can review the example. You can review what it says in the text. But we'll definitely go over this, because this is a very, very, very important topic. The big thing to remember, the is a test. And you, 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 uh, inheritance is appropriate when you can say this is an example of that. And if it is appropriate, then you can extend the class and you can code only the differences. All right? Code only the differences uh, in the subclass. And then you can use the subclass wherever the main class is expected. That's pretty awesome. All right, we'll pick up on this more detail on Monday.